Eric Erickson is here, syndicated radio host, heard across the country, author of the best daily conservative political note available. Uh, am I on to something here, Eric? Yeah, you are in a bygone era, but, you know, Dianne Feinstein um, probably has dementia, according to people close to her and in her orbit. You've got John Fetterman's issue. You've got Joe Biden's issue. So, no, McConnell's not going to go anywhere. And, and you know, I, I do. I'm not a fan of McConnell. I got to give him credit. He's still willing to do these pressers, unlike the others I've mentioned. He's still willing to go. He might freeze and they've got to unplug him and reboot him, but he's willing to still engage and meet with the press. There's clearly something wrong with him, and I think he needs to be very transparent about what's going on. He had a bad concussion. He's over 80 years old. He's aged very rapidly in the past number of months since that injury, but he's not going to step aside. Uh, and, you know, the partisan in me says we can all clamor for Mitch McConnell to do it, but no one's clamoring for Dianne Feinstein to do it or John Fetterman or even Joe Biden to do it. In fact, the press I would disagree with you on the press would turn their attention to Joe Biden. Yeah. I don't think they would. No, yeah, well, no, that's a, look uh, hard to argue with any of those points in terms of whether or not you're going to start getting some tough questions from the press uh, about President Biden's mental acuity. I, I guess my question, though, is why fellow Republicans have yet to turn on Mitch McConnell. It, it, it is though he has sort of unbelievable power over all of his fellow Republicans in the Senate. Why, why do Republicans put up with this? The same reason Democrats are putting up with Joe Biden, despite being tied in the polling averages with Donald Trump. McConnell, like Biden, are the only two men who can keep their parties together right now. In the Senate, you have these great divides, uh, potentially a three-way divide between Barrasso and Cornyn and Thune. Uh, McConnell kind of unites all the factions, other than some of the conservatives like Rand Paul, uh, possibly Mike Lee and Ted Cruz. They all trust him. He's established. And in their private interactions with him, uh, he's not freezing up. Uh, so they they trust that he can get through this in the same way that if the Democrats were to get rid of Joe Biden, you have a very messy primary all of a sudden because Kamala Harris can't unite the party and the left and the far left would fracture. I wonder, though, if playing it safe, right, you know, ships in a harbor are safe, but that's not what ships were built for, that playing it safe, as it appears as though Mitch McConnell and Republicans are doing in the Senate, as Democrats are doing with Joe Biden, and we've covered that extensively, you and I have talked about it, if the playing it safe idea uh, doesn't come with its own risks that Republicans just aren't realizing. Yeah, look, I think it does. There's a growing conservative antagonism towards McConnell to begin with. Uh, he's one of the leading senators pushing for funding of Ukraine from the Republican side. Uh, that's not going well in the House. You have conservatives who have always been deeply skeptical of him, except when it comes to judges. You do suddenly begin to make him a primary issue among Republicans for 2024, since he intends to continue being leader until 27. We, now, we've always seen these where yeah. people vote against McConnell, but this time, suddenly, there's a real reason to possibly vote against him as leader. Yeah, you think about, though, and, and look, I, I've got a very good friend who was a retired congressman, uh, had made his money and, and done other interesting things in his life, went to Congress for four years. He quit. He said, because uh, I had the best job in my life a while ago, and everybody in Congress feels that this is the best job that they'll ever have, so they won't give it up. You know, look, Mitch McConnell could do a lot of things in, in his retirement. Um, we have a graphic of him water skiing as a Kentucky Derby horse racer, Burning Man, uh, performing with a Kentucky Bluegrass Band. Probably none of those things are going to be happening. But how did we get it that we created a situation where the people who were supposed to engage in public service, okay, now it is us serving them, that somehow the founders missed this idea that we would get on, on both sides an entrenched political aristocracy. It, it, it happened uh, by neglect of the voters. Uh, you know, the incumbents get reelected at over 95 percent, even in really bad years for Congress, over 95 percent. The voters ultimately like this level of stability. The voters are to some degree a little lazy when it comes to engaging and trying to find new people. They don't trust anybody, and there's reason for that. So you might as well just keep sending the same people back um, who've been there for a while. And yeah, that, that's a, a sign, I think, to Tocqueville, if he were to come back and look at our society, he would say this isn't the healthy republic he found when he first looked. Um, but there's a level of uh, disengagement from voters now that allows the status quo. Inertia does not just play in physics, it plays in politics as well.
Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.